Le'Veon, what you been up to, bruh? I haven't heard from Le'Veon Bell ever since he got into that fight with Adrian Peterson. Who knocked out who? Did Adrian Peterson get knocked out by Le'Veon Bell? But apparently he's in the news again because Le'Veon is going out sad, according to uh, my boy Mike. So we're going to get right into it. Appreciate you. Hit the like and subscribe button for more content. What's going on with this former Pittsburgh great who walked away from like $18 million to hold out? And that's when we really realized that the running back position got no leverage in the league. It started with Le'Veon Bell, bro. I'm, I'm realizing, I'm like, wow, this is actually, it's a social media platform that athletes are using. Only fans out here. I knew we were going to be having this conversation. Again, I made an OnlyFans account, which I honestly never thought I would do. So that, that was, me, you know. Me either. Me yes. Either. I know that things have been moving really, really quickly in the NFL offseason. Russell Wilson signed with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Justin Fields got traded to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Sam Darnold signed with the Minnesota Vikings. Hollywood Brown signed with the Kansas City Chiefs. Things are going so quick that there are some pieces of very important information that periodically slips underneath the cracks and that's what i'm here for bringing you the news that is most oh. important of all stuff that you could not bear to miss so before we get to the content we're on the grind to 900k subscribers make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications to help the channel grow wow, bro. now that we get all that out of the way break damn fuck you bro now that we get all that out of the way break needs is a single point xr i give mix right check out this have had an awesome off season so far i mean between signing russell wilson for a veteran minimum contract to poaching patrick queen from the baltimore ravens to trading a sixth round pick that could become a fourth round pick for justin fields to banishing deontay johnson to the carolina panthers which by the way deontay historically speaking if the steelers are trading you and you happen to be a wide receiver that pretty much means your career is over don't believe me look at what happened to antonio brown once he got traded to the raiders Juju Smith-Schuster after they decided to let him walk away. Martavis Bryant in the middle of the 2010s. And my favorite one of all, Chase Claypool after he got traded to the Bears. If you're a wide receiver and the Steelers gave up on you, I'm sorry, but it looks like you're but that doesn't only apply to wide Chase receivers. Claypool. It also looks like it applies to running backs that turn their back <coughs> on the pitch. That's crazy. I remember Chase Claypool was a bear, right? What, what happened to him? Steelers. <laughs> During the second round of the 2013 NFL Draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers selected Le'Veon Bell, a halfback that completely revolutionized the running back position. Back. I've never seen a running back play the position the way Le'Veon Bell did. Famous for his patience and picking the right hole consistently, Great which hand. yes, I know might be some foreshadowing. Le'Veon Bell was elusive, patient, and intelligent whenever it came to running the football. But as you guys know, contracts in the NFL are very, very complicated. So after being a very big part of the Pittsburgh Steelers offense for his first five years in the league, Le'Veon Bell held out during the 2018 season. Now, Bell would sign a four-year, $52 million contract with $35 million guaranteed with the New York Jets shortly after. And this is a huge reason why running backs have struggled to get long-term contracts until recent memory. Between Le'Veon Bell, Ezekiel Elliott, and Todd Gurley, these three individuals collectively f the running back market. All of them got big contracts. None of them were worth the big contract. And ever since then, up until this past off season, at least, it's been hard for running backs to secure the bag. Now, when Le'Veon Bell was on the Pittsburgh Steelers, he was a huge component of a very diverse attack. He had players like Antonio Brown and Ben Roethlisberger flanking him. So you really didn't know what was coming when the Pittsburgh Steelers were facing off against you, which gave Le'Veon Bell a lot of room to focus. But on the New York Jets, he was essentially the only weapon they had on offense. And his his head coach was Adam Gase, meaning he was just running him in halfback dives consistently. So Le'Veon Bell had his worst season to date with the New York Jets. He rushed for 789 yards, 3.2 yards per carry. And after two games in his second season with the New York Jets, they decided to cut him. And rightfully so. Le'Veon Bell would sign with the Kansas City Chiefs in the middle of the season, but the Kansas City Chiefs already had their rushing attack figured out. He didn't really get many rushing attempts, about 63, but that's pretty decent and considering the fact that you were signed in the middle of the season. The result was Le'Veon Bell calling out Andy Reid for not giving him more touches. And after burning his bridge there, he decided to sign with the Baltimore Ravens. And with the Ravens, he played sparingly in five games. He got 31 attempts, a 2.7 yards per carry average before he was cut in November of 2021 and then signed with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This reunited him with Antonio Brown and he would play even less with Tampa Bay, only getting about 
about eight rushing attempts, but he would get one receiving touchdown with the Tampa Damn, Bay Buccaneers over. before getting released in January of 2022. Damn, and ever since then, Le'Veon Bell has been out of the NFL, but he's tried various different ventures. Very shortly after his NFL career was over, which by the way, he stated out loud that his NFL career is over, Le'Veon Bell then attempted boxing, which was very entertaining considering the fact that he was an athlete and he was facing off against other MMA fighters. Maybe this was his calling. So in October of 2022, Le'Veon Bell made his debut against Uriah Hall, where he would lose via unanimous decision. But this didn't deter Le'Veon Bell. Five months later, in March of 2023, he then announced that he was facing off against British YouTuber JMX, in which the professional athlete beat the YouTuber via a unanimous decision. So far, he's one and one, and his only victory came against another YouTuber. And he actually fought Adrian Peterson as well, which resulted in a knockout in September of 2022. Since then, Le'Veon Bell has been kind of struggling to pay the bills. At least that's what one would assume. It's like a lot of people don't realize this, but football isn't forever. You better hope you invest that capital wisely, Le'Veon. So Le'Veon tried a plethora of different things to get himself unbroke, which by the way, this is just my assumption because if you were content with the amount of money that you've made, chances are you wouldn't really be doing this type of stuff. So in February 2024, Le'Veon Bell stated that he wants to come back to the NFL and only play for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, I found this to be hilarious, but you should watch this interview. He even said, I'm going to be honest with myself. I got to go out there and be like, I'm going to put my foot in the ground. Do I feel it? Am I hurting? Can I go out there and really play again? And bro, I'm telling you all right now, when I go out there and train in March, and if I hit April and I make this decision to come back and play in the NFL again, mark my words down, I'll be better yeah. than I ever was. And the funniest part is... <laughs> this next line and i will only come back for that one team you all know who it is i don't have to say no team you all know who it is this kind of reminds me of what happened when neil young said that he's pulling all of his songs off of spotify because of the joe rogan experience he was doing it for society he was doing it for humanity he was doing it because he couldn't allow his platform that all this music is on to spread misinformation only to return a few years later once he realized he really needed the money it's really funny whenever an individual that burns bridges realizes that he shouldn't have burned a bridge bell kind of acknowledges this saying i never apologize to the fans for sitting out or leaving the steelers i never apologize so i want to say i apologize for leaving the best damn fans there is in this damn world i shouldn't have left i apologize i should have never left i apologize that's my fault best that's on me world, but at this like point that. i don't really know what are the odds of Le'Veon bell making a comeback and the fact that he's packaging himself with the Antonio Brown here. Antonio Brown kind of saw this and he's like, ooh, don't forget me too. I would love to come back and play for the Steelers. It's like, you made an ass of yourself once you were in your prime and now that you got humbled, you're expecting the team that you were an to do you a favor eh, that's not how it works this should be a lesson to everyone never burn your bridges but it gets so much worse i mean we didn't even get to the part where i state the reason i made this video to begin with and ladies and gentlemen buckle down in order to keep the lights on Le'Veon bell on? decided to resort to uh adult content about a day ago yes, Le'Veon Le Le bell posted Le this very interesting picture onto his story it's a story that's verified and yes that is a locker room of an equinox i go to equinox and to know that you are taking these types of selfies in Equinox makes me incredibly uncomfortable, but to each its own. They have a no phone policy in the locker room, damn it, and it's for reasons like this. So he posted this promoting his OF, and then when you take a look next, you'll see some of the messages Le'Veon sends on OF and... It's a tough read, but I'm gonna do my best. Oh, I can bro. go as many rounds as you want, baby. I'm like Muhammad Ali. Bro, Muhammad Ali has to be rolling in his grave after hearing this. The next one's even worse. <laughs> Suck me up while I smoke. You gonna have me blank too quick. And then probably my favorite one, I feel like my blank getting bigger. No lie. There's a whole bunch of these. I'm gonna leave it on your uh. screen because I don't want these clipped out of context and used against me for the rest of my life, which I'm pretty sure they will be. Now, when Le'Veon 
Le'Veon Bell was asked why he makes OF content, his reasoning's even funnier. I decided to do OF as a platform for the simple fact to get more intimate with my fans. I don't know if you guys remember oh. this, when social media first came out, like when people were getting on Twitter or on Instagram or on YouTube for the first time, they would say, hey, I'm getting on Twitter or Instagram or YouTube just so I could have a better way of communicating with my fans. It's just so funny to watch this man's fall off. I mean, it's crazy. Most athletes get into podcasting. Most athletes try to get into media. But in the case of Le'Veon Bell, when you're consistently going to new places and you're consistently burning bridges over and over and over and over again, obviously you have nowhere else to turn to to keep the lights on. I mean, if you're an athlete and you happen to watch my content or if you are planning on taking the road of a professional athlete, the one lesson I have to give you is, bro, save up like five mil or six mil and go buy a bunch of income properties. Seriously, a $1.1 million income property can generate anywhere from 80K to 100K of revenue for you on a yearly basis. You could take on a loan, you could buy it all cash. It doesn't really matter. And I know that doesn't sound like a lot of money. I know making 200 or 300 or 400K a year without really having to do anything but manage these properties doesn't sound exciting to you, but it sure beats the hell out of sending a message like, just pull your pants down right here and let me slide it in real quick. So let me know what you guys Yo, think about oh. this story in the comment section <laughs> down below. I know it's of the <laughs> utmost importance to you all. And aside Yo. from that, I'm your boy, Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload. I could have lived without the OnlyFans tweets and texts and like, oh my gosh. Bro, that's what Olivia Bell's been up to? Why not take the podcast route? Uh, uh, come on, men on... Oh First of all, I don't even want to tell y'all what I think about men on OnlyFans. That's for another day. But damn, Le'Veon. Yeah, shout out to Mike, because this one's actually pretty funny compared to his other contents. This this was Le'Veon Bell is going out sad. And it's crazy, too, because he's a Pittsburgh Steelers great. I don't care what anybody says. Le'Veon Bell is probably one of the best running backs to ever play for the Pittsburgh Steelers. You're going to have to let me know who you think was better. And don't tell me Jerome Bettis. I, I ain't trying to hear it. Or Willie, or was it Willie Mays? Willie Parker. Don't tell me Willie Parker neither. Le'Veon Bell was... Nah, I ain't gonna front Willie... Le'Veon Bell was him. In his prime, he was him. I'm gonna holler at you guys in the next video, bro. Like, god damn, bro. Man, you made like 80 million. Like, how do you make 80 million over the length of your career before two years out the league? Y'all already doing... I mean, I hope he ain't broke, but I don't... I mean, whatever, man. I'm gonna holler at you guys in the next video.